Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, May 27th. Okay, so we have the moon in Capricorn energy going void, of course, at 4.02 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Aquarius energy at 4.45 p.m., so not a huge amount of time that the moon will be void. And of course, when the moon is void, things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable, and we can definitely feel the major shift in that energy prior to locking into, again, the next sign. Now, let's talk about the next sign. So we're moving out of the earthy energy of Capricorn. We took on a very serious tone. We should have been very focused on our long, long-term goals, on our visions, on our dreams. And we should have actually become a little bit more aware of the blockages, of the challenges, of the issues, of the problems. And in the Aquarius energy, first of all, it gives us an opportunity to be emotionally detached so that we can act as the observer and see the bigger, broader picture taking place. But also, so the Aquarius energy attempts to free us from those limitations, from those blockages, from those restrictions. Of course, the Aquarius energy rules over the highest point of our intellect and therefore acting as the observer and seeing all of the interconnecting wheels and dynamics at play, we should be coming up with some solutions on where it is that we can do better, where it is that we can improve, where it is that we can see things from a different set of eyes. So there are 10 different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Capricorn energy still going to make an awkward interaction with the sun. The sun, of course, shining a bright light and Gemini energy, giving us different perspectives, different options, different variables to think about. Again, we're in the information gathering stage of the zodiac wheel, which means that the moon in Capricorn giving us a logical, practical, emotional disposition to sort through some of the new information and details that at this point we're not even making making sense of. We're just in the processing stages. This is going to illuminate a new emotional awareness, likely where new options and opportunities to align with a new long-term goal, vision, and dream is definitely concerned. And pushing the boundaries of our mental plane, especially with Jupiter now in this Gemini energy, to see what is possible for us when we actually kind of break out of the comfort zone, the comfortability of the ways that we've been thinking, to expand and explore different possibilities possibilities that we may not have even considered up until this particular point. The moon in Capricorn then going to get into a square, creating some tension, some conflict with Chiron, that wounded healer in the Aries energy. So of course, this isn't going to feel good. This is going to illuminate the wounds. But again, keeping in the bigger, broader picture here, we have to illuminate the issues, the blockages, the challenges, the problems, the issues in order for us to fix them, repair them, improve them, better them and resolve them once we shift into that Aquarius energy. So right now we're having a little bit of a problem because we're not feeling as confident as we want to. We're not feeling as sure as we would like to be feeling right now, especially within this new version of self, you know, considering the fact that the moon in Capricorn is prepping and preparing us to boss up into new roles and responsibilities, new areas of life, new areas of expansion. Now we are definitely standing in this new version of self and we're questioning whether or not we're ready. So again, this is when the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, the vulnerabilities get exposed. And again, just keep in the back of your mind that this too shall pass. It's a very short transit, but it's also very important for what it is that we're going to fix, repair and resolve in the coming of days. The moon is then going to try beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy. This is some earth on earth action here, which of course is stabilizing us, anchoring us, grounding us in order to see where it is that again, we are opening up our heart space, our head space to see where it is that we could do things differently, where it is that we could make some improvements, where it is that we could try new ways of doing the same old, same old. That Uranian energy wants to kind of spice things up. The Capricorn energy, of course, wants to keep things the same. So as long as we are being presented with new methods, new options, new opportunities that are more efficient, much easier, and still kind of get us to where it is that we want to go, the moon and Capricorn will be on board with that and not as resistant to the changes as we would be if it didn't make a whole lot of logical and practical sense to make said change.
The last aspect that we have going on here with the moon in Capricorn energy is the sextile, beautiful interaction with Neptune in his rulership in this Pisces energy. So we love this because, of course, Neptune in Pisces is very much about our intuition, our higher self, our spiritual life lessons, our imagination, our creative force energy that we're pouring into kind of redefining what it is that we want to be building and creating and bringing to life. The magic that we're able to create with this new vision, this excitement, this inspiration that we're kind of cultivating within us, we're able to give it a platform, a structure, a foundation, if you will, here in the physical realm through the moon being in this Capricorn energy. Emotionally, it aligns us with what needs to be done, what we have to wrap up, what we have to bring an ending and a closure to in order to actually start advancing on this new path towards this new goal, new vision, new dream. So again, the moon is going to go void of course at 402 p.m eastern standard time we're locking into aquarius energy at 4 45 p.m about a half hour later we're going to have the moon now in aquarius energy trining beautiful interaction with jupiter the planet of growth expansion beliefs abundance and blessings who just shifted into gemini energy again if you haven't listened to that astro forecast i'm going to recommend you do so we're in a new energy where jupiter is concerned and for the next year expanding our mental plane, peaking our curiosity, blending our intuition with our intellect and our wisdom with our actual knowledge. So this is a beautiful and very beneficial type of energy because of course it's air on air. So there's a lot of pressure in the headspace. If you need to take a listen to this week's Ascension forecast to understand where these particular energies are manifesting in the physical form, I'm going to recommend you do that. There's going to be a lot of high highs and low lows in this Gemini energy and because Jupiter tends to turn the volume all the way up and magnify whatever it is that we're thinking and feeling we're definitely going to feel that pressure increase now this is an optimistic energy it's giving us the greater grander picture if you will it's offering us an opportunity kind of get a brand new lay of the land to see where it is that we're being challenged to see where it is that we could actually move into new options and opportunities due to us again not being as emotionally attached to the outcome as we were again in previous energies that moon in aquarius energy just has us operating from the observer and that means that we're not as easily triggered and activated as we normally would be so there's an expansion of our emotions there's an expansion of the goal the dream the vision an expansion of our mental plane where options and opportunities are concerned that again we're trying to get in alignment with the sun in Gemini energy going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict with Chiron. So this is definitely going to make us feel funky. We're going to be a little bit awkward, if you will, because we really have this want, need and desire to kind of move on. We want to learn. We want to grow through what it is that we're going through right now. We are having a tough time trying to process our experiences. We're having a tough time trying to figure out how it is that we're going to make some changes. This particular energy definitely sucks the optimism out of things that we just kind of tapped into, sucks the confidence out of us as well. And now we're kind of sitting in some fear. We're kind of afraid of kind of breaking away and doing our own thing, dancing to the beat of our own drum. We're kind of in fear of switching things up a bit. And of course, we still have a lot of information to gather. We still have very, very many things to learn here in Gemini season before we're going to align with a choice point because of this particular friction this is going to illuminate where it is that the blockages are and again stay very aware of those blockages those challenges within us because this is what we are going to attempt to better to improve to resolve over the next couple of days the moon is then going to come up to bump into team up with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who was retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So this is definitely going to intensify our inner realm of thought, of emotion, of planning, of strategizing. 
Pluto is here to kind of reveal a hidden truth, a hidden detail, if you will, that will help make a lot more sense about where it is that we're trying to go. Again, reminder, Pluto being in a retrograde is trying to illuminate where the power struggle is still alive and well within us. And in Gemini season, that division, that duality is just as much magnified, especially with Pluto kind of adding on this extra intensity, this extra layer of needing to focus and concentrate on new perspectives, new narratives, new sides of the coin, if you will, in order for us to kind of boss up to be more in control, more power over current situations that up until now seem pretty bleak, seems pretty stagnant and frustrating. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with that north node in Aries energy. This is going to be a beautiful interaction for us to see where it is that there is some potential for us to move on, for us to grow, for us to improve, for us to do a little bit better. And so this is going to help us evolve. This is going to help us expand again, acting as the observer, emotionally speaking, we see different ways that we could try getting a different result. And again, that North Node is trying to get us on the right path to reach new missions and goals for our soul's evolvement, for our soul's potential. And we are starting to kind of formulate a plan, a path, a strategy on how it is that we could definitely be growing through what it is that we're going through. The moon is then going to semi-square Saturn. So, of course, this isn't going to feel good. Saturn is the traditional ruler over Aquarius energy. Of course, Uranus being the modern day ruler. Saturn being the Lord of Karma in Pisces energy is trying to deconstruct the old belief system, the old ways of doing things, the old ways of kind of looking at a situation, the old goals, the old visions, old dreams. The moon, though definitely trying to give us a bigger, broader picture on where it is that we have to wrap things up as far as the old goes, especially with the way that we're kind of talking to ourselves, treating ourselves focused on what we didn't accomplish versus what we actually did. There's a lot of focus on our shortcomings when there should be more focus on some of the things that we've been successful at. This tension point is going to illuminate where it is that maybe your routine is not working for you anymore, where it is that we need new willpower and discipline in order to implement a new structure in our lives, a new foundation in our lives. This is again going to kind of bring us down a couple of pegs, give us a reality check so that we can figure out what the problem actually is again, so that we can attempt to fix it, heal it and resolve it. Now, the last thing that we have going on here today is Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, ruler over Gemini season, who is currently in Taurus energy. Mercury is sextiling, beautiful interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma in this Pisces energy. So first of all, this is going to give us a much more logical, practical, realistic point of view perspective. This is also going to put us in a situation where, yep, we're grounding ourselves out, like in our mental plane, we're becoming very tunnel vision, very focused on the problem so that we can fix them, especially where structures and foundations, where willpower and discipline is concerned. There is this, I'm going to say, opportunity to kind of see the things that aren't so happy, aren't so joyful in our physical realm, but then also understand the spiritual life lesson that we're currently in and having to deal with these particular conflicts. And so it is kind of giving us a different perspective to work with, a different approach to work with, and where it is that we have to become a little bit more logical and practical in our reasoning versus kind of allowing our emotions to get the better of us. This is a great energy for us to kind of see new options and opportunities, to see a new path that we can kind of explore and research where it is that we have to get a little bit more organized with our thoughts, with our ideas, with our plans, and with, of course, our emotions. Now, let me just say there is this underlying pressure, this urgency, if you will, to kind of make a decision to choose. But let me just remind you, we need to move through the entirety 
of Gemini season before we're going to make any kind of major choices, major decisions, major pivot points. As we kind of move through the season, we're going to gain more and more perspective and information and details to help us feel more informed to make said decisions. But there's this pressure to make a decision now. And let me just be very clear. There are going to be waves of information coming at us, at aha moments coming at us, at epiphanies coming at us, that's going to make us feel like we have all the information that we need to make a decision, hold off, okay? They do come in waves. You are not given the information in its totality, the first, second, or even third wave. We do need to kind of do the dance, the cha-cha-cha through Gemini season in order to gain as much information and perspective as possible and then to actually find a sweet spot to lean into, to stay in alignment with the goal, the vision, the dream, that we will be 100% informed as far as decision-making goes towards the end of Gemini season. 